I am genuinely happy for this man uh, seeing his face. He has been excellent and loyal to a baseball town that used to be a baseball town that in the middle of it has been terrible for a long time. And he's been the only excellent thing there for so many years. And now they're exciting and now they're fun. And now I get to hear his post game interviews when they ask him questions and he gives deep answers about process and that he's feeling very good about his swings, even though he's making outs and all he cares about learning in this business is having the experience of confidence to know that you're going up there and you're good at your job and you will forever be good at your job. And it is so much fun to see what is happening, Joey Votto, with the Reds. And it is so fun that you're getting to experience it specifically because the grind of baseball is awful and losing is awful. And you've been great in the middle of it for so long. I'm just happy to see that Cincinnati's excited all around you. Wow. Wow. Um, I thought we were going to talk about the weekend. I was listening to the last segment <laughs> and I was, I had some things to say about his most recent album. He's my favorite, my favorite. I watched him in Toronto back to back nights because I love him so much. So, um, let's move on from baseball and keep talking about the weekend. Yes. So. Canadians sticking together and we would love to move on from baseball. We just have like one Easter egg behind you that has got us all excited Looking at the schedule, you're at the Washington Nationals. Why is there an inaugural season Florida Marlins poster behind you? This, <laughs> this is the uh, this is the the clubhouse manager's uh, office. So he has pictures with presidents. He's got pictures with you know all kinds of sign stuff. So it's his it's his nostalgia. I can't speak for it. So, uh, I thought uh, it was unfair what they did to the weekend. Did you? Did you? If you were hearing all of that, they've all given up on him because he made a bad television show. Well, lead in the uh, witness. Yeah, yeah, I heard. I heard about that. I I didn't see it, so I can't speak on it. But I can. I love his music. I love his music. It's 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 the music I work out to, train to in the off season. What's so. your favorite song? I wake up to um, every day. I wake up to. Um, Oh my goodness! I feel I don't it coming titles, every oh, day. You like the I weekend? Name yeah. five you of their songs. Name, name three songs. No, 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 no! I can name songs all day. I can sing the entire entire albums from right. start to finish. All right, go for finish, it. So. We'll wait. Oh wait, I'd like to start do with this. Don wait FM. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Joey. If we want to, you're a pressure. do the Jim Carrey parts. You're, you're a pressure. You're a pressure oh, player. Really? Okay, he because th- he can do it. He he doesn't like you guys questioning his bona fides here. How uh, help us out? Show us what kind of weekend fan you really are. What do you mean? But I, they want you to recite lyrics. You said you could do the okay, whole album. Right, Dan is like the Joey Votto uh, of making things awkward. Uh, okay, so after hours. Um, Take off my disguise. I'm living someone else's life. Is that enough? Yeah. It's so good. I don't want you to stop. Is that the song you wake up to? No, no, no. I Feel It Coming is the song I wake up to every day. That's the very beginning of of, of, uh, After Hours. And I told you I could go from the very beginning of the album to the very end, but we only have so much time, and I've got to answer Red's questions. <laughs> no, you don't. Though, no, actually. we can keep doing I would weekend be, lyrics. I would be. I'm not kidding you when I say if you want, Joey, if you want to take the rest of this segment to just enjoy the weekend with us, have at it. We don't have to actually talk about the Reds. Our team's really good, really fun. It's it's too it's 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 a bad idea not to talk about it. I mean, we've got. Uh, a group of young stars that probably should be talked about because I don't want the average major league baseball fan or even average sports fan to miss out on not tuning in on us. I mean, we've got this, this kid, Ellie De La Cruz, who could end up being the most enjoyable f- guy in the game here in the not too distant future. He's must, must see TV. And then we've got Matt McClain, who's going under the radar. He's our shortstop probably should be in the all-star game. Uh, we've got Hunter Green who's injured right now, but could be, you know, the next hundred mil, uh, hundred uh, mile per hour superstar power pitcher guy. I could keep going, but we've got so many young stars on our team that the average fan, if they have a chance to, they have one of those like uh, league passes or whatever. Consider watching it. Consider watching us. 
Joey, you're you're a dream because you're talking about the players and not about the process to have gotten to this point. And people may be underestimating how difficult it is to get to where you are right now. And you've been there on both sides of the aisle. And having a veteran supportive of these young players, that's how you have a winning team and a winning clubhouse. And you deserve the credit for that. Well, I what I've learned in my career is in baseball – you just have to have a deep team. You have to have lots of stars. You know, I, th I think of it in, as like in the NBA, you need one superstar, maybe a second. In baseball, you probably need four to eight players, like a true, like a core of like star level guys that can make the all-star team or fringe all-star team guys to be a division winning cal caliber team. So we've got depth and and the way our system works is we we do a lot of platooning we do a lot of like matchups we make sure that we have the best lineup every day and uh you know we're a handful we're a handful for team for teams one thing that i've embraced and it can be difficult for uh an older player uh especially one that's used to um playing every day is i tell i, I tell the manager you play me when you want if all of a sudden there's a switch in the second or third inning i'll come i'll come into the game I'll come into the game and play the rest of the game if the matchups, if the matchups work that way. Because first of all, I love to play. But if if I'm not getting the start against the left-hander and we have a close game, I I have to be able to help the team that day. I have to make sure that I'm prepared that day. So I always think about I always think about like the great players or the everyday players or being used to something. Uh, I, 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 in any sport, you watch. You know, you saw Ronaldo. Not to speak ill of Cristiano Ronaldo in Manchester United or other players that are not used to coming off the bench and used to certain levels of play, I promise myself, and our team promises ourselves, we're going to do what's best for the team whenever, and we're all going to be ready whenever we're needed. So it's a good group. It's a really good group. Joey, that's super rare. You know that, right? Like, I don't think you're just giving lip service to that. Somebody of your caliber gives up his at-bats uh, very stubbornly. Very stubbornly. Still do. I still do. I, I, I'm not happy about losing at bats. I'm a, I'm a competitor. Uh, but it, it, I also recognize that I'm going to have good matchups. I'm going to be able to help in, in odd times. So we just have to think a little bit outside the box to get the most of our, get the most out of our lineup. With the rule changes, how have you adjusted to the uh, pitch clock? Ah, oh, cake. I love it. I love it. It's um, the game was so getting so slow. And um, fans are letting us know they love it. Um, you know, it's not, how unfair is it to start a game at seven o'clock and there's people that have to go to work or take their kids to school or there's kids that have to leave early because the game didn't get done at, at 10 o'clock. It gets done at 1030 at 1115. And, and, and that was a nine inning game. To me, it was getting to a point where it was um, unfair to the fan and we weren't serving we were in we're in an industry where we have to serve the fan and we weren't serving the average fan you're uh promoting the reds hall of fame induction uh danny graves university of miami legend among the names going in uh you've performed so well under the blinding lights you've been a star boy surely uh, one day they will call out your name in that uh, reds hall of fame uh you've earned it you know that you can feel it creeping up on us so yeah. when they call out your name how do you think you're going to react? Uh, I don't know the lyrics to call out my name. So I don't think I can. I, yeah, if you're, started, you're, you're out of time. To, yeah, I, if you started, I'd be able to uh, keep a lot, keep up with it. But uh, just off, off the cuff, I don't have them. So will it, will it take your breath away? Oh, my God. I'm sure you can't even feel I your face when song. it happens. I love that song. Save yeah. your tears. Yeah, yeah, you save your tears. Are you uh, are you feeling uh, somehow bad because the pressure of coming up with weekend stuff when you're such an aficionado? Like clearly, you know your stuff, but they're putting you in pressure situations. And Vado's running scared and a bit of a choker. I don't think he's running scared. I, I think he's saying try me. Choker. I am a choker, and I am scared. Scared yes. to live. I like this attitude. This is good. You have to call me out on my BS. Yeah, give us one right now. Give us, give you one what? One right now, or is it lost in the fire? <laughs> uh, I'd okay. die for you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the weekend. <laughs> I love Joey Votto. God, you're the greatest Canadian baseball player. No, uh, that's not a question. No, 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 no. It's not, I'm not going to let you do the humble thing. Days. No, I'm not going to let you do the humble thing. You're the greatest baseball player. You're long It's not a humble player. thing. No, you're, it's it's not an opinion. It's a fact. You're the well, best. Well, it's like saying it's like saying is the weekend the biggest Canadian singer of all time. I, I mean, mean, probably Celine, probably Drake. Uh, I mean, Snow. Music musically. Bieber. Snow. Snow is still Bieber. huge in Canada, which I I it's a loss on America. That Snow he's viewed as like a one hit wonder here in the states. Yeah, but yeah, Snow former. had a very Sweet illustrious song. career. Yeah, informer, great song. <laughs> Uh, Joey, I do appreciate the work that you do uh, professionally because you are a maximum professional. I'm curious, in these back and forth, are you actually tired of talking about baseball? Would you prefer, in these kinds of settings, for questions about other things? Uh, no, it's, it's whatever the, the, whatever the, the interview, which, whatever direction the interview goes. It doesn't, it, I guess, yeah. I mean, I, I, what I'd like to do is start like brushing up on 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 my the skills it takes for me to eventually uh, work at you know work uh, alongside the the current group or new group uh, Good Morning America. At some point, I'd like to host Good Morning America. So I need to I need to work on that, sharpen up my sharpen up my skills. I, I do improv in the off season just because you know eventually I will you know, work for Good Morning America. I, I think so. you have that charisma about you. I feel like we've established, even though we're over Zoom, I feel like uh, we've established an okay rapport. Uh, I very much clearly am a fan of yours, but I, what I'm getting down to is how do I make you love me? How do I make you love me? Um, wait, is that another song? That's not another song. Right? <laughs> how do I make you love me? That's all he's doing. <laughs> the last three minutes, that's all he's doing. I can't believe that you just said you do improv in the off season, like stand up. I used to, I tried, I tried a second city stand-up class and COVID kicked in. So I wasn't able to actually do a, a tight five, but yeah, I, I, I fool around with some improv in the off season. Just, I found that like, um, it, it helped me with, um, my teammates It helped me become a better communicator and a better listener. And yeah, it's, it's, um, it's a good option for people that want to be better communicators in general, but better listeners. So, yeah. I'm going to talk to your agent to see if we can get Joey Bravado to do an improv uh, stand-up set somewhere in America uh, for a, for an audience uh, that we back because this guy deserves We just did. We're doing it right now. We're doing it right now. Look at us. Best friends. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Joey, congratulations on the success. It's always good catching up with you. And again, I will remind everybody, the Reds Hall of Fame induction this weekend after the All-Star Game. I should say the weekend after the All-Star Game. Yes, Mike, Danny Graves, also Bronson Arroyo, Gabe Paul. Joey, there aren't a lot of players to choose from. You've played, I mean, the last 20 years of Reds baseball have been really hard on you. You've been, it, it really has been wonderful to see you shining in the middle of all that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. The city deserves it, and I'm happy that I'm I'm, I'm pl happy that I'm playing with such a great uh, group of guys and and guys that are fun to play with. So thank you. Yeah, hopefully your team comes alive in the fall time and you make a, a run to the World Series. That would be great. Good luck the rest of the way, Joey. Take care. Thank you all. Love you. I'd like to get to that damn Nick Chubb video, please. I, uh, I appreciate Joey Votto's time. Brock Meyer was excellent. But I want David Sampson to look and watch with me because I, I really don't believe that most Americans understand what they're watching on Sunday. We've got more information than we've ever had about football. We think we know more than we've ever known about football. But you have and I have no earthly idea how difficult it actually is to tackle Nick Chubb. We can see it. We understand that he's really good and has an average yard per carry that is absurd because of what kind of running back he is. And in the weight room with a bar that is bending from 45s on it, he is squatting a totally absurd amount of weight because his lower body and core are unbelievably 
strong. Mike, what was the weight on that? Is that close to 600 pounds that the man is squatting? It's 675, and it's a special bar because when you have that many barbells and that many Cadillacs on the side, you have to be able to bend because if not, the thing will snap. That guy ate more plates than Dan Levitard on Thanksgiving. Wow. Are we the- sure this isn't one of these fakes where you could just like lift this thing with one hand? Like he's Larry the Lobster and SpongeBob? Like what? Zagak. You think that that is uh, a fake that all of those uh, Cadillacs it's styrofoam? Is, said, are styrofoam? Yeah, yes. it's a type. It's a special bar, as Tony is. You're not in the Iron Temple with us. He, I, I do my own thing. Yeah, real lifters know. And the, I've never seen spotters actually be there, not for the safety of the person lifting, but for the safety of others. Yeah. They're there for the bar. They actually get a workout doing like the lifting off the thing. They're doing a, a squat themselves. Yeah. He, here's the thing about Nick Chubb. Not only is he one of the strongest, but he's also one of the fastest. And he gets stronger as the game goes on. He literally beats you down. He wears you down. And that's why in the fourth quarter, you often see him running for 50-plus yards away from people. It's not just that he beats you down. He's beating you down at a position where he is torching his value and body by beating you down. Ezekiel Elliott, is he signed anywhere? Dalvin Cook, uh, still negotiating, right? These are good running backs at a disposable position in that carnivore sport where it's eat up your body body for money. That's what the job is. Uh, How strong are you now? You're not going to be that strong next year or next year. The the rest of your life is going to hurt. Because you run like that. And I want to ask you about, all of you, about what Jonathan Jones of the Patriots said. Jonathan Jones says, I can risk my life to win a football game, but I can't bet $1,000 on my team to win a football game. And he is right. And that sounds like it is wrong. But that's the deal we've all made. Like, what he's saying is true, accurate, shouldn't feel quite right to him. And I think we all understand that's too bad. The contract you signed, it's not merely that you've got to give your body to this sport and risk your life. No, you're going to come and work in a workplace that has so many rules that, yes, your life is going to be worth so little that we're going to hurt your body and you're not going to have freedoms that other people have. You can risk your career, make a move from ESPN, and find a way to not figure out who's doing what when in the service of you or your show. Is that possible? You're welcome. Could that happen? So you're putting it in a way that you're surprised that there could be some sort of dichotomy when you're talking about two things that, of course, can exist simultaneously. And they shouldn't. But clearly they do. But it's not just that they shouldn't. You say they shouldn't. The business of sports is built on the throwing of those bodies into the maw for our entertainment. Physically, hey, tackle Nick Chubb. See if you don't get paralyzed. See how it goes. I don't know. He wears you down at the end of a game. We love it on Sundays. You might break your neck. He's really strong. Sorry. I'm betting $1,000. You can't. We'll get the next guy after him. That's it. That's the deal, though. It's a one rule. And while I hear the plight, I don't really empathize. I mean, you're going to have a lot of patriots in your mentions saying, I could die for my country at 18, but I can't get a beer until I'm 21. The manly man. It's just, you know, that's the rule. There's just one rule in that sport. There's one rule. You just don't break it. That's what, that's what it takes to get into the door and to be able to keep your job outside of the meritocracy that is that sport. This is the off-field rule that we have. You can't bet on it. It seems easy enough. And without that rule, he wouldn't get paid for risking his life because – it would be wrestling, and you wouldn't have the billion-dollar broadcast deals. Oh, but what are you guys hearing in my voice on this? Because it is an unfair thing that's simply built into all of the contracts. I'm not I'm not complaining that he's not allowed to bet on his team. I totally understand why he's not allowed to but bet we on ha- his team. But we have rules in place for, say, stock trading. We have insider trading rules that many people abuse, but we have them in place because it's unfair. And if you're in that locker room and you're taking action on a game and you can have a direct hand in the result of that game when other people have money riding on it, legal money now, then you should not be able to bet on it. Like, we understand why this rule is in place, don't we? I do get, though, the optics of the league now taking money, a lot of money from the betting companies and still prohibiting players from participating even when it's outside of sports that they play in or may have any information on, but... I also know that it's something that has been bargained over, and I imagine in the next CBA they may 
find ways to lessen the penalties for certain infractions or make it uh, so that there isn't a crisis where there's you know multiple players on multiple teams out for season long you know suspensions because of it. I imagine because it is a newer thing, uh, it hopefully will get ironed out a little bit more. But I also see the hypocrisy in in the leagues and owners being willing to accept the money from these companies, but also saying players can't have any hand in it. We are not going to allow them to to do something that is pretty much incredibly popular now, legal in many states, and a pastime for many people that they, you know, a lot of people like doing all the time. It's been a hell of a month for guys named Jones in the New England locker room. There was Jack Jones, who when John Morant came out with the gun thing, said, you can never get caught with a gun, and then went to the airport with a gun and got arrested. And then now Jonathan Jones with this, it's like, guys, come on. Do we know, David, uh, if if an owner gambles, what happens? Nothing. Well, they're they're not part of the CBA. They don't have to yeah, agree not. to any you, you, sort of you know same thing that happened with Bob Kraft when he got in trouble. D- Daniel Snyder, like they are not agreeing to the same rules and penalties for their behavior that players are. And it's part of the the defense that Deshaun Watson's camp had when they didn't want him to be suspended for all of the sexual misconduct accounts while Dan Snyder had been accused of assault and Bob Kraft had been in trouble because of the massage thing in Florida, which I don't even remember like what where that netted out, but you know, he I think he got suspended for a game. But there's not it's a different standards and that's because of the power imbalance in sports. Was there any punishment for Kraft? I didn't think I can't there was. Re- I, don't I didn't even think remember. there was any I think he punishment got off. for Kraft. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> 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 I mean, they can bet on other sports, though. They're not prohibited from, from betting altogether. They can bet on other sports. Come on. Like, uh, jockeys can't bet on, on horse racing. Like we, This is the deal. The horses can, though. <laughs> and the players do benefit from all the gambling money, of course, because it's revenue into the lead that goes to the cap. So I don't think we should downplay the benefits for the owners getting gambling money, but it is a problem. <laughs> Juju, Tony put, is so Juju, happy. Juju, put it on the poll. No, that's not the one he's laughing at. Juju, put it on the poll, please, at Lebetard Show. Do the horses bet on themselves in horse racing? We really don't know. It's a funny visual. Then. Are they Placing allowed? Bet, yes. Uh, Are they allowed? I should have said nay. I blew it. Can we get to uh, the video that I first saw because Carrot Top produced it? I was not aware that this was a viral video. Uh, David, have you seen this video of a woman freaking out on an airplane that Carrot Top was on? Again, I'm only telling you Carrot Top again and again because it's the only way I got the information. Well, Carrot Top was on the plane. He did not produce this video. Wait, wait, wait. I like the idea of Dan gets all of his news from Carrot Top. <laughs> <laughs> He's not reading like any newspaper. He's just on Carrot Top's feed, and that's how he finds out about like anything happening. So this went, this went viral, this video of a woman leaving a plane, and we have sound of this, too, in video to accompany the video. There was a woman that went viral because she demanded off a plane because she alleged that one of the people on the plane was not real. I'm telling you, I'm getting the off, and there's a reason why I'm getting the off, and everyone can either believe it or they cannot believe it. I don't give two fucks, but I am telling you right now, that mother that back there is not real. And you can sit on this plane and you can <laughs> die with them or not. I'm not going to. So it was later discovered, as if this wasn't like a weird enough story, it was later discovered that Carrot Top was on the plane, <laughs> that he was on this plane was in question. Was she talking about Carrot Top? If she was, I understand where she was coming from. <laughs> I love everyone looking back in the video. That per- that is not real. You just see a bunch of heads look back. It is a it is a comedy skit. I wish the camera work had been so much better in that I wanted a close up look at the face of the person being accused of not being real. It could have been a rod. The way. <laughs> but Dan, this is the thing because there is no video that has come out of the person being accused of being not real. I was down a deep TikTok rabbit hole yesterday, and people think that A, it was a shapeshifter, B, it was a reptilian person who gave a vertical wink, and C, it was Satan himself in a hoodie that was talking to this woman without actually moving his mouth. 
The I, conspiracy theories, they're on TikTok. Go find them. all I was concerned with is the delay in having to pull her bags out oh, of the, the bottom. Oh, but these people were stuck there. For, they So they were on the runway about to take off when all of this happened. And the plane pulled back into the gate. Everyone had to get off. They had to take her bag off, check everything. They waited for like four hours. Finally, were reboarded and on their way to Orlando. But it was a, a huge disruption. And apparently, she may have been detained. But I still haven't found like that many uh, explanations about what she actually was freaking out about. I don't know. I can fix it. The number of people who are able to ruin more people is what bothers me and why PJs are a way better way to go. There's 400 people on that plane. One person should not be able to ruin the day of 400 people. Yes. The math doesn't work Private for me. jets are preferable. That's not what we're doing right now, though. We're talking about a reptile Satan artificial intelligence. Thing. As soon as I saw this video... I, I obviously assumed there's got to be some mind-altering substance there, but then my mind immediately went to, oh, Tony's going to believe this. I'm intrigued. Uh, Tony, Reasonable uh, doubt, Dan. Tony, we, we don't have, if, you know, we don't know. Tony, I heard you threaten Mike earlier. Uh, you're tired. You're tired of Mike putting you in these positions, and you're like, what? Oh, I'm doing it. Yeah, it's me. <laughs> No, it, I, it I, literally I, is you. I pushed the, the ancient Egypt, uh, Egyptians Wi-Fi theory on him. No, that's me doing that's that. That's all me, actually. Tony threatened that he's got a haymaker coming your way. That At it's, some point. It's months in development. <laughs> it's in, <laughs> all right, I'll keep, I'll keep waiting. <laughs> Just when you least expect it, that's when it's going to clock you upside the head. You never know. All right. Just be careful. Yeah, right I, will, here. I will wait for the heavy one. In the meantime, <laughs> I will hear out these conspiracy theories, and I'm curious to know if you think that person is real. It's not just the sound of thunder and lightning. That's the sound of a red hot crew. That is coming off a win on Thursday Thunder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We won our parlay of aces, Marlins, and whatever the hell David Sampson gave us. Thank you for your contribution on that. We're gonna, we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna give you a winner. So let's let's try to replicate the formula. The WNBA is off today, so this is all baseball. Wait well, a minute, we game. won a three-team parlay. Is that the first time we've won a three-team parlay? No, not at all. No, we we we're actually pretty we're good. good. We're having a, a hot summer. Yeah, thank you so much for caring about something that is so important to us. Like we put well, our you, reputations you just, on the line. You lost so much at the beginning. They're parlays. We're like two. They're for hard. Twenty-eight. We're hot. So right now. like that was like a plus four hundred juice. So you could be all mad and stuff that I've lost four in a row, but then boom, one win. Guess who's back even? You bet responsible. Thank you so much, because as you know, Dan, this segment Thursday Thunder is brought to you by our good friends over at DraftKings Sportsbook. You can follow our parlay on the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Here we go. First one up, courtesy of Chris Cody. He's saying four-game sweep in Miami. That's what he's saying. He's taking Marlins over Redbirds. Yuri. Well, there is a. they must be a big favorite today if it's Yuri pitch. Minus 130. No. It's not really big. Like, everyone's looking at this like saying, really? Can they pull off a four-game sweep? I don't know why the Cardinals are so bad. They've got at least five players that I've heard of. <laughs> It is strange. It is strange. Goldschmidt and Arenado on your corners ought to be good enough. Like, they, they have a good team from what I can see. It's been a very bad year. Yeah. Very, very bad. Uh, my pick, my contribution to this three-leg parlay is I'm going guards over Royals. Because uh, <laughs> the guards are okay and the Royals are very not okay. Fading the Royals. Baden the Royals are about 20 games under. To do. Uh, this I is a minus 220 favorite. Zach oh. Greinke is 1-8 for them. Zach Greinke still pitching for the Royals. Dude, serving up some meatballs. He's Might been be. serving meatballs up for four years. So I had I had two members of the, the Minnesota Twins outfield. Don't ask me to name them. I think one was Kepler, and I think the other one was Buxton, but I would never heard of them before. But I just saw Greinke opposing them, and I won the yeah. DFS competition. I mean, you're telling me he's a stud? I don't watch Twins baseball. Like, the entire – if you're not the Cleveland former FKA native indigenous people from the 1990s, I don't know you. I just don't follow. And there was, like, one time Bobby Jenks was fat and Ozzie Guillen, like, signaled for him. But that's all you know, I know. You know, uh, you, all you have to say is Terry Francona and them boys. Yeah. I know Miguel Cabrera, thanks to David Sampson. Kicking it over to you, David, for the third and final leg of our parlay on Thursday Thunder, presented by our good friends at DraftKings Sportsbook. 
We're going to take the nothing personal pick of the day again. Diamondbacks over the Mets. That's a winning formula. And that is today's Thursday Thunder. The Mets were a strike away from losing yesterday. I've heard of Rocco Baldelli. And I'm just learning right now he's not playing platoon outfield. He's actually managing the joint. There's so many players from the 90s and 2000s that are managing now. David you, Bell, I believe, coaches the Reds. Manages. Oh, man. Why is it a coach in college baseball but a manager in, in, in pro baseball? I don't understand this. I told you this with Skip Schumacher last week. They correct you in baseball all the time on locker rooms and clubhouses, and if you call a manager a coach, you're a dipshit. Like in baseball. There are coaches in baseball. I know, but the manager, the manager is not the, the manager. Is not a coach. I'm telling you, they will correct you on that one every time. We have gotten too far into the show today without talking about Twitter falling apart and being ref, uh, replaced by what I like to call thread. A single thread. One single thread. Uh, I can't believe that our hero, uh, we turn our lonely eyes to Zuckerberg. Yes. It's embarrassing. Into your safe, warm embrace, Marcus Zuckerberg. We have lived long enough to see Mark Zuckerberg become the hero in this tale. The guy that sold us up down the river to Russia in the first place. He's not a hero. Do you think this app's actually going to stand the test of time? Yes, because it, it's called Threads, but really, to Dan's point, it only needs one singular thread to be successful. Why and that is not be Elon Musk. Yeah. It yeah. just seems like it, it's not ready yet. Give me two weeks. I'll see if people are still using it. Maybe I'll join. So here's, here's the argument against it not being ready. Did Elon Musk create it? Does he own it? Are we still doing the one from That's a fair. few weeks ago where like Roy had Blue to give sky. us access? I'm on it. I'm skeeting all day. I, I haven't skeeted. I haven't skeeted in a while. Skeeting to the right, skeeting to the you, left. Mike. I'm not I'm not skeeting. No, I mean, skeeting. It's one thing. Do you understand? If you use it, you lose it. No, no, you don't. Use it. If you don't uh, use it, you yeah. lose it. No, but you can. I'll just leave. There are other ways to not. <laughs> I'll see you later. Skeet is like a sp very specific thing. I'm pretty sure it'll still be there if you don't use Blue it. Blue Sky's while. dead. Blue Sky's dead. It's, it's the posters app. One segment after threatening you with a haymaker. Tony lets himself out of the room. He was him and Chris were dancing so much back there at their Robert Kraft got off joke they started they started dancing together they're right he didn't get suspended right. he got off on all his charges they dropped him all mm -hmm. it was a terrible joke though yeah. <laughs> one of the worst he was which so is saying something disgusting he was minds here so happy with anyways it. i've been skeeting for the last few months and i found <laughs> that it has what i liked about twitter that threads does not have yet which is a page where i can read uh skeets and tweets from people that i actually follow Apparently that's not a, a feature on, on threads. No, it is. So here's here. But they're also showing you other random too, no? So threads, not really, not so much on, on my timeline. And I'm, I'm still trying to get the grasp of it. Here's where threads had, it was in the capper seat. To, if anyone was going to take down Twitter by just replicating Twitter and not being an Elon Musk vehicle, it was going to be someone that already had all your data. So the cool thing about signing up for threads is you just migrate over your Instagram follows. Now, some people have found this a little annoying. Like, wait a second, I don't think I want to follow some of the same accounts that I follow on IG on Thread. But you can migrate that over. What would really set this thing in motion was if the newsbreakers would join Threads. And Shams was on that thing before I did. Be before I knew it was available, Shams was already on it. Woj is already on it. So the newsbreakers are already out there threading. And people already have thousands to their follower account. So this thing has happened very quickly, and I do think it's an actual fact. Two hours in, it was already the fastest-growing app in history. It's Twitter. It's basic Twitter. They, 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 they are missing so many functions. I imagine this thing will take many changes uh, over the next few weeks and months. But what people were looking for was just Twitter and not ruined by Elon Musk, and they found that in threads. The problem is that, first of all, when I started last night— I was concerned about two things in my head. One, am I getting another addiction? How is there room to be on both? And what the insiders are doing, and Shams, I checked for it, he was posting on both at the, the same exact tweet was going on the thread. But your social media team at Metal Arc was amazing. When I first started thread, the first message I got on thread in my timeline. Threads. In, in threads was you, was a picture, an unflattering picture, but a picture nonetheless of you. 
So the Levitard Wait, network. Wait, was it the one of him naked, like laying on the table? That's he had a shirt on. He had like a, a shirt a on. Flan- like a Are there any flattering like a Hawaiian <laughs> shirt? <laughs> uh, uh, is that a Hawaiian shirt? <laughs> yeah, or a it looks like shirt? a Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> yes, there Trying are definitely flattering pictures. <laughs> it was a scene from a few What's good on men. The it is a few good men scene. Uh, danger, grave danger. Is there any other <laughs> kind? <laughs> right. You just asked if there are any other kind of <laughs> photographs of me other than the unflattering kind. That is what you just did to me. Okay. <laughs> I don't like that it's three days in a row of fat jokes. I, well, I mean, today me it's low-hanging it's, fruit. It's never been quite this. It's never fruit. Heavy-handed. Thank you for stepping on my joke. <laughs> he sinks again. <laughs> Thursday, Chris. <laughs> Look at him. He disappears. He disappears. <laughs> because he just stepped right on my joke. Right. I was going to go to heavy handed. And the word before my producer, always helpful, because as long as he can get his shot off before mine, my producer wanted to throw in a Dan doesn't eat fruits joke. I mean, you can't say fruit during that. Yeah. That was on David. Yeah. I think he's pissed off about Tahoe. And I'm worried this is going to have legs. He's lashing wow. out. Do you believe yourself to be someone who looks like he eats a great deal of fruit? I do actually eat <laughs> a lot of fruit. It has sugar, though, in it. It has a ton of sugar. Yeah. That's what they say. No. Sugar. no. He's just off a cruise. It takes weeks to recover from a cruise. Weeks. That cruise has not made its way through your system just yet. Yeah. And when it does... <laughs> I only pooped three times on my 10-day vacation. <laughs> Put it on the poll, Juju, at Levitard Show. confirm. I was deeply concerned. <laughs> it was Sunday. I'm like, uh, Chris hasn't checked in since Wednesday. Can you imagine Chris Cody in Ruben's bathroom post-cruise? Uh, Juju, uh, I don't want to imagine that. Uh, Juju, please put it on the poll at Levitard Show. Does the cruise buffet go through your system six days after your vacation? Because I can't imagine how unhealthy you and your father were on that thing. You may have norovirus. I actually drank less on this cruise than most cruises. So thank you to everyone. Which was still a lot. Yeah, Yeah. a ton. (laughs) Do you hear this? 